Hey, uh, hey, noob time. Uh, yeah, Kairos. You know who my favorite brawler is? Who is that, Kairos? Jesse. You want to know why? Let me guess, Kairos. It's because, because of her mechanics. Hello, fellow brawlers. I'm Kairos Time, and it is time to talk about my favorite brawler in the game, Jesse. Now, in this guide, you will find an in-depth look at her stats and mechanics, advanced tactics and taps, the best places to push Jesse to 500 trophies and beyond, including her best game modes and maps, as well as some tips to countering Jesse. But before we get to uncovering the secrets behind Jesse's turret doggo, I wanted to give a special thank you to Cats for sponsoring this video. And no. I'm not talking about those cute little feline friends that your neighborhood creepy cat lady is obsessed with. No, the cats I'm talking about are a lot meaner. Cats is a creative game where you can build the ultimate battle car and fight your way against real players all over the world. There are limitless types of death machines you can build from spare parts that you get from opening boxes. You can customize the way that your cat driver looks. Mine looks like a bunny because it, it's a cat in a bunny suit. That's... That's funny. There are also bi-weekly special all-star events where you can use giant battle cars in arenas with different traps like burning ground, low gravity, and uh, a whole lot more. Click on the special link in the description and once you do pass the tutorial, you'll unlock some exclusive bonuses that will help you boost your game progress early on. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into some Jesse mechanics. For Jesse's regular attack, Shock Rifle, uh, Jesse fires an energy orb and that energy orb can actually bounce off of the next closest enemy target after hitting a target and it can hit up to three total players or targets such as bears and turrets and stuff. You should always try to force enemies to clump up so that you can get as much value out of each of one of your shots and the attack itself is actually rather slow so it's important for you to lead your shots and predict where people are actually going especially because it's uh, rather easy for you to dodge if you're paying attention. If the attack does hit, the aftershock is even slower, but it does actually increase Jesse's range by more than 60% for every single bounce. And that can absolutely help you hit enemy players behind walls or reach further distances. For her super scrappy, Jesse puts down a turret that shoots at the closest enemy in range. The turret cannot move, so make sure you put it in the best position possible. We'll definitely cover the best positions later in this guide, so make sure you stick around for that. For her star power, Energize, Jesse can shoot her turret, which will heal 800 damage on it, and then it will bounce off to the next enemy. Shooting the turret also counts as one of those uh, targets, and so it will only be able to hit two more enemies after that. Now let's actually take a look at Jesse's stats so we can compare them to every other brawler in the game and see how she's stacks up. Now at first glance, Jesse's stats look rather weak uh, because this graph does not take into account her mechanics, including her bounce shot and also the fact that her turret counts as an additional teammate of sorts. Uh, but that's actually a huge key to Jesse's success. Jesse's best stat is her range, which she can use to attack from a distance, her reload speed, uh, her movement speed, and her HP are all average. Her attack is actually very low in comparison to other brawlers in the game. This means that she does struggle 1v1 against other players when she does not have her turret up, but if the enemy team does bunch up, she can become incredibly strong as three brawlers being hit with one attack actually gives her one of the highest damage per seconds in the game. Granted, that's usually pretty inconsistent. Her lowest stat ranking is her super charge rate, and this is definitely justified for a lot of different reasons. First of all, her turret adds more damage on the field. Second of all, it's possible for it to completely recharge an entire other super by itself. Uh, third, it forces enemy opponents to be mindful of where to move, which gives Jesse a lot of control. And fourth, it also adds more HP on the field. Even if it does get taken out immediately, that requires enemy ammo, and that can absolutely give the enemy team a major disadvantage. Also, one thing to recognize about this chart is that it assumes that Jesse is fighting one enemy brawler. Uh, if you can lend your shots on multiple brawlers, it can charge up her super incredibly quickly. Now let's talk about some advanced mechanics and tips on how to best play Jesse. For Jesse's ease of use and skill cap, I would give her a three out of five for both of those, meaning that uh, uh, she's not particularly hard to master. She's not particularly easy. Her average HP means that you need to play really smart and make sure that you're not overextending yourself. And it is highly recommended that you actually manually aim with Jesse's shots, although they're rather wide. So it's not like 
as critical as a brawler like Rico, for example. And when you're playing with Jesse, the number one goal is that you should try to charge up your turret as quickly as you possibly can. Alone, Jesse offers very poor control, very poor damage, and she's also considered a very easy target. But with her turret up, she can deal an insane amount of damage, and in a sense, she has one of the highest HPs in the game with combined with her turret, um, and not to mention the fact that she can actually 2v1 an enemy brawler all by herself. This means that Jessie has two styles of gameplay that she needs to switch between depending on whether or not her turret is up. The first is when she does not have her turret, and this is where you should play very defensively as you focus on keeping your distance and charging up your super. Peeking around corners and firing off of shots and then going back behind the wall is very uh, useful for this. It's also important for you to focus on brawlers who are bunched up to maximize total damage. And second is once you do have Jessie's turret down, that allows you to actually go a little bit more on the offense, uh, offer a little bit of control. Also very important that you do not stay super close to your turret. Otherwise, if they happen to miss you, they might hit the turret, or if they happen to miss the turret, they might hit you. So the goal is for you to be relatively the same amount of distance between you and the enemy brawler as your turret and the enemy brawler, so that they actually have to engage both of you at the same time, allowing you to effectively 2v1 them. Now there are three major uh, turret placements that you can use to counter any brawler in the game with Jesse. If you are playing against short range brawlers, you can actually place her turret in the middle of the map or on your side of the map without any walls or grass next to it. Doing this makes it impossible for short range brawlers to take out the turret without taking damage as they try to get close up to it, therefore allowing you to recharge up another turret as well. If you're playing against long range brawlers, you can put it on your side of the enemy wall this actually blocks them from being able to attack the turret from a distance and forces them to get close enough to the turret so that they will actually take damage if they want to attack it. Once again, this actually forces them to choose between attacking you and the turret, which allows you to 2v1 them. And third, when you're actually playing against enemy throwers, it's very important for you to place the turret on your half of the map around two to five tiles away from you. Also, like if they're on the left side of the map, then you can put it on the right side of the map. And that means that they actually have to push you back in order for them to gain access to your turret. You can also place your turret in the middle of the map, although you probably should not do this unless you actually have Jesse's star power. Now learning when to use and when not to use Jesse's star power to heal her turret is a huge difference. After you drop your turret, you should not immediately start firing off attacks uh, to just increase range. What you want to do is you want to wait until they actually start attacking the turret so that you will heal it and increase your range to likely hit the enemy brawlers. It's particularly efficient for you to heal your turret if you have not charged up another turret yet. And keeping her turret on the map healed up is a great way to add pressure to the enemy team. But after you've charged up another turret, it actually may be beneficial for you to start sh saving your shots for just the enemy players instead of your turret so that you can then throw down another turret as soon as they have taken the first one out. One other tip to playing Jesse is that you can actually use her turret as a last ditch HP reserve against brawlers who attack that don't pierce who are about to take you out. So brawlers like Bull or Shelly that happen to get really close up to the Jesse. This is especially beneficial if you have the team countdown for like a gem grab uh, and you have the majority of the gems and you need to keep yourself alive. But typically you want to get as much benefit out of the turret as possible. And so you don't actually normally want to drop the turret um, close to those brawlers who are short range because then they can just take it out. Okay guys, now let's go ahead and talk about the best game mode and maps to play Jesse on. As you can see, we've got this cute little graphic here for Jesse, uh, basically showing you where her best game modes are. And as you can see, her worst game mode is going to be Bounty, where I would not play her competitively at all. She can be played in solo showdown using the survival strategy, but it is not her best game mode. That being said, if you do plan on playing her in solo showdown, I would play her in Double Trouble, Island Invasion, Rockwall Brawl, Scorched Stone, and Thousand Lakes. Jesse's a bit more viable in duo showdown due to the enemy players actually clumping up a bit. Uh, she's good on those same maps that I have uh, listed right there. Jesse can also be played on heist with the right team comp, but I would not recommend playing her with uh, randoms. Also, her strategy in heist greatly relies on her ability to actually use her star power to bounce shots off of her turret to then attack enemy brawlers and also the safe from a very long distance. This works particularly well on maps where brawlers tend to bunch up a lot. And if you do not have her star power, she's not a great option in high, so you can still play her. Uh, her best maps are going to be Bridge Too Far, Corner Case, 
forks out and Kaboom Canyon. Her best game modes to be played are going to be Gem Grab and Brawl Ball. In Brawl Ball, she does well on maps that allow her to utilize her long range against close range brawlers that struggle against her turret. She's also best paired up with control brawlers such as Nita, Terra, and Spike. And while she is viable on all the Brawl Ball maps, her best maps are Sneaky Fields, Puddle Splash, Pool Party, and Triple Dribble. For Gem Grab, she is best played as a Gem Carrier once again. Her focus should be to try to charge up her super as quickly as she possibly can. And after after she does this, then she can actually swap from a more defensive playstyle to a more offensive one where she can use her turret to control that center of the map. Just make sure that you're very careful with her as she does have very low HP. And her best maps in Gem Grab are Chill Cave, Death Cap Cave, Deep Siege, Flooded Mine, Stone Fort, and Undermine. Now let's go ahead and cover some tips on how to counter Gem Number one tip to playing against Jesse is to not let her charge her turret. This is kind of obvious for all brawlers, but her especially, she is very weak when she does not have her turret up, and once her turret is up, it is not something that you can ignore. Due to the slow projectile speed of her attacks, it's actually relatively easy to dodge her shots if you're paying attention, and you are at her max range. Once she gets a little bit up close, to you, then uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult. It's also a very especially important to not bunch up with your teammates when you're playing against an enemy Jesse. If you are playing another brawler that spawns things like another Jesse, Nita, Penny, or Pam, then you actually want to be very careful about where you place those spawns so it's difficult for Jesse to actually use them against you. If Jesse does actually charge up her turret, you can walk in a circular pattern around the turret in order to avoid damage. Especially against a maxed Jesse, you have to make sure that you burst that turret down as quickly as you possibly can. Sometimes this requires coordinated efforts with your teammates, especially at max level. And if you're playing a bull and your teammate is playing like a longer range brawler like Colt, you may actually be better off just trying to keep your distance away from the turret and letting your teammate deal with it instead so that Jesse actually does not charge up a second turret while uh, you're trying to get rid of it. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this brawler guide for Jesse. Make sure you put it in the comment section below which brawler you want to see in the next brawler guide. And for now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.